What's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack, and we're here to close out that week with the last call. That's right. Last call has so many meanings, but for this video, we are talking about those comic books that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday night. That's right. You want to get those comics in and get those orders into LCS and online. And why do they want to do that, Jack? Well, because, you know, getting those orders in at an earliest possible date helps you save the most amount of money. Um, it also helps the LCS and um, shop owners to be able to predict, uh, you know, print runs and um, quantity and to know how much money they're going to have coming in. So all for all of these reasons, FOC is really the way to go. This is the show that not only helps you save money, but helps you make money um, and add some great books to your collection in the process. Right, we're going to start right now. The first book is more of a reader buzz pick for us. This is one that we like. We all know a new movie's coming out for, but we have from Dark Horse, Bill and Ted are Doomed, issue number one. It's going to have two covers for it. That's right. Great time to release a Bill and Ted comic coming um, right on the heels of the upcoming September 1st um, brand new Bill and Ted film that is going to be both video on demand as well as in theaters. Um, I think there's a lot of anticipation for this. Obviously, we're in a different uh global climate where um you know i don't think that the box office numbers are going to be what they would be but the pride is like 20 years in the making waiting on some more bill and ted so i'm not surprised and kudos to dark horse for, for jumping on this and, and kind of coming out with a comic well timed with the upcoming movie um bill and ted comics have always been kind of a niche thing there's been times where that like that first appearance has gotten popular the newer stuff has never necessarily penetrated the market, but at the same point, Keanu has made a real dedication to the comic book industry. We've seen that with his upcoming Berserker from Boom Studios. So we'll be interested to see if, if more and more comic fans are jumping on some of this uh, Keanu kind of greatness. Yeah, I'm definitely interested to pick it up just for the reading of it, but you never know. It truly might be a dark horse. So we over to Marvel for a second. We have Captain Marvel number 21. Now we have talked about Captain Marvel the past few issues. This is a great arc. We have talked about on this channel how, especially myself was a naysayer, but I've been enjoying this title. But what do we got going on in this issue, Jack? Well, here you're getting the conclusion of the storyline that's really brought readers back into the Captain Marvel um, book. And, you know, a lot of people are going to point to Empire. I really think this is independent of Empire. I know this is an Empire tie-in, and certainly we're dealing with Kree storylines, so it certainly ties right into Empire. But, you know, I think that we've shown and we talked about this uh, on, I think, the Bolo show when we were talking about, you know, it, when Star came out, we were kind of hesitant. And then, you know, the reader buzz, we listen to what you guys out there in the Civil Comics family are saying. So if you guys tell us, like, oh, no, you guys need to be reading this. Ruins of Ravencroft is an example of a series that I didn't read originally. You guys told me to read, um, and I've really enjoyed. And, you know, Captain Marvel was another one. And once I jumped on and I started talking about it, Brian got on when the trade came out. Um, and we both really enjoyed it. And I think that that is kind of the key to, like, organically building a character is trying to get that reader buzz first. And whether it comes through secondary market success or just, you know, genuine readers passing along word of mouth, it really doesn't matter. And then there was a little lull, right? We got done with that storyline around, I don't know, 15-ish. Uh, and then suddenly, no one was talking Captain Marvel for the last several issues. And then all of a sudden, uh, we get the first appearance in 18. Uh, 19 sells out, 20 is in demand, 21 is in demand. And this doesn't surprise me. I don't know how long it'll last. But I think you can ride this Captain Marvel wave for a while. And if you're already reading the series, and this is already one that you're into, and you're quite, this is why FOC is so important, because flippers are going to get in and out based on books that they think they can make some money on. And, you know, if you're a regular reader, you want to make sure you're pre-ordering those books FOC, getting those orders locked in. Um, so not only are you reserving your copy for release date, but you're also saving some money in the process, especially if you've been a Captain Marvel loyalist this whole time. Don't let the flippers like me jump in and out. Now, here's a book we've seen solicits for a while, especially a lot of that cover art going out there. We've seen some Alex Ross cover. Uh, we're talking about Rise of Ultraman number one. I think the only thing more ultra than Ultraman is the ultra amount of covers that are going to be available for this book. Now, if you're not familiar with Ultraman, 
I forgive you because the truth is when this was solicited, neither was I and really neither was Brian. So, uh, you know, this is not one that really hits my radar. This is for our kind of anime fans, fans of Japanese Gundam culture, um, all of those kinds of people. They're really going to resonate with this because if you're not familiar with Ultraman, the kind of like dime store explanation is you're looking at a character that history dates back to the 70s. Um, you can think very similar to what we've seen with the Shoguns, with Power Rangers and things like that. Um, you're talking about a character that has appeared in several television series as Ultraman, as that character um, appearing in other shows uh, throughout Japanese television history from the 70s all the way to present day, including animation as well as live action. So this is a character with a rich history that has a large fan base and is one that, although someone like Brian and I really don't connect with this type of product, you can't sleep on. One of the, one of the principles that really that this channel as Brian and I came together and kind of formed a new thing, we really founded this on early on was like respecting fandoms. And that's why we talk about Ninja Turtles and we talk about My Little Pony. And some of it, maybe things we're not even always that into. But the truth is we recognize that there's a market out there that is into it. I think that this is an example of that. It'll be interesting to see what the overseas market for this book is like. Um, it'll be interesting to see what the variant covers are like, or if this is just one of those things that sounds like a great idea, and then doesn't really pan out um, in the secondary market the way you would hope. But I could see this going either way, Brian. I could see this book being released to absolute crickets, and I could see this book being released and being massively under-ordered and selling by gangbusters. Yeah, and I kind of felt the same way. I wasn't too familiar with the character. But there's one thing on this book that made me kind of excited to read it when it comes out, and that is that it's being written by Kyle Higgins, and what do we know about Kyle Higgins? Right, right. That's, of course, the mastermind behind Boom Studios' relaunch of the Power Rangers. So that's where I say, like, if you're, if you're into that kind of a product, you, this may be for you, even if you're not familiar with Ultraman. So we're going back to back to back with Marvel, and this is another title a lot of people have been anticipating. And we're talking about that Web of Venom Wraith. We're combining Venom and that Donny Cates Guardians of the Galaxy goodness into one great title, right? Right, and this is exactly why the back issues for that Wraith Annihilation Conquest miniseries have been going crazy. Now, we want to definitely send a shout out to our Patreon member, Ron Hayslip, who is our local, really, Venom guru, the guy that we go to for all things symbiote and he's been hot on this one for a while and i really look at this and go this is something to pay attention to not just this is a reader buzz book for me and this is going to be great to read but if you're sitting here really trying to make these wraith venom connections stronger um and you're a believer in the long-term value of wraith as a character again this is why we talk about reading aside from reading just being great and fun and a great way to escape um your day-to-day -day life situations it's also if you're an investor, it's a really good tool to use for investment purposes because you're going to have a better idea at the validity of a Rafe investment long term after this book comes out. I know my man Lucas Fashina from the It's the Drunken Chat Son on the Mighty Mel V YouTube podcast uh, and YouTube channel uh, has been long advocating the connection between Wraith and uh, you know Venom. And we've seen more and more people that I respect, like Ryan, like Lucas, have kind of made that connection. So seeing this one shot now coming out. I think this is going to be really popular, and I think it's going to have a lot of comic investigators doing their research. Here we are. This is probably going to be, I'd say, the biggest release of the week in source of volume and gravitas, because we're talking about that big monumental issue. We've talked about monumental issues on here before, but we're hitting Detective Comics number one. 1027 now we know batman premiered in detective 27 right That's so right. here we get 1027 you got like every writer you got all these great artists in here you got some great covers as well i kind of like i I've, I've had my favorites that i've picked i know i like the j scott campbell i like the gabriel Dotto, but i think this is going to be one that i pick up multiple copies of just from the collector point of view that collector perspective I like this book. It's that monumental issue. And then I like the art for some of those covers that I want to add to my collection. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, we've been big fans of these. Um, a lot of people in the secondary market, the 
the, the speculator, the flipper community, they don't like these higher per, um, price point, higher print run, accessible art that usually people want to be more exclusive. Guess what? Those are all the reasons I love these books. They've and they don't fun. like bag and board in the thicker square bound books. Yeah, but they've been fun, man. I've, I, I've really, really, really enjoyed putting together a lot of these. Um, I'm not going to say that I get all the covers, but I get my favorite ones. And um, it's usually more than I ever intend to originally when these books come out. So this is another one that'll be like that. There's also a multitude of amazing exclusives. And uh, of course, we've got to mention our channel sponsor, Frankie's Comics, who dropped an absolute fire, unique exclusive with a distressed kind of old school detective comics paper looking blank variant with that old school detective comics trade dress on it. It's going to look amazing with some cool Batman sketches on it. Get your favorite Batman artist to, to sketch on that thing whenever convention season opens back up. Yeah, and another thing, we like to talk about these type books in this type show because we know there's a whole bunch of covers out there. We know it's a little higher price point than the normal book you'd pick up. Mm -hmm. So that's the perfect time pre-FOC to get a pre-order in because you might be able to get a discount on the single issues you want or there's going to probably be bundles out there that you can yes. get at a discounted price as well. So get those orders in before final order cutoff. We also want to bring to your attention, DC's final order cutoff has moved a day earlier, right? That's right. That's right. DC continuing to make things difficult, moving new comic book day a day earlier, which basically the market has rejected. And now moving FOC a day earlier. So definitely be aware of that because if there's any of these DC books that you're trying to get your order in, I know we always talk about Monday, um, at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is that cutoff time. You don't want to wait till the last second because a lot of dealers are putting orders in, in advance. So you want to give them a few hours. But um, it's it's imperative now with DC releases that you have those orders in before Sunday. So look to lock those in Saturday. Um, I think that's your best bet. Yeah, don't get the orders in at the last minute. If anyone's ever worked in a restaurant, especially in the kitchen, and you're cleaning stuff up, trying to close that restaurant down, and then a party of eight comes in to eat dinner, right. that's kind of how these com comic retailers feel if you're trying to put in an order last minute as well. Right, and they've also got lives of their own, so they may miss your message or email. Um, if you're trying to hit them up at like 9 o'clock on a Monday night, you, they may miss it and then not get that order in before 10 o'clock. So, you know, lock that in as early as you can. Um, if you're watching this show and you're taking your notes, try to get your orders in tonight, tomorrow. Moving back over to Marvel, but we're going to a galaxy far, far away. We're talking about Star Wars with issue number six. This one's on FOC. I've been a big fan of Charles Soule since he's been writing Star Wars. I have been going back and reading all those issues that I kind of didn't follow before and have been enjoying it. We've talked about it on this channel. But this issue number six has something that's pretty cool, right? That's right. You're getting a first appearance of a brand new lightsaber being wielded by none other than Luke Skywalker. And I got to tell you, um, this is one that I think could have some traction in the secondary market. First off, Star Wars is coming at like the hottest point in its kind of comic incarnation. Um, we're seeing back issues of first appearances fly off the shelves. And while you may say this is kind of gimmicky, right? It's a lightsaber color, uh, this yellow lightsaber. We're talking about Star Wars fandom. Remember the controversy that went into like Mace Wando and his, his lightsaber. People care about this stuff. And, you know, it's important to note, this is where FOC comes in very important. That 1 in 25 variant shows Luke wielding that lightsaber. I could definitely see that becoming um, a long-term kind of hot variant. That's one to pay attention to. And it's one that you're not going to want to wait till release day to be chasing and paying whatever pre-order prices are being paid at that moment. Yeah, I think it's crazy because just this past Bolo show, we had that John Tyler Christopher action figure variant. It had that old display case with all those old action figure type looks in there. This is one that we we're talking about. Hey, you never know what could pop off. Here we have a 1 in 25 action figure with Luke Skywalker and that yellow lightsaber. I was talking about the telescoping lightsaber back in the day with the action figures. Here we get one with the yellow lightsaber. You never know how Star Wars fans are going to react. Great time for FOC. And... The regular cover A is gorgeous as well. So far, we've talked about a lot of big two books, but this is also that portion of the show where we're talking about those indie books. That's right. This is the indie showcase section brought to you guys by Black Cape Comics at blackcapecomics.com. 
all the books we've talked about, especially the ones that we're about to talk about, the any showcase are available for pre-order at blackcapecomics.com. So if you don't have an LCS, you can definitely get your orders in there. But the first one we're talking about is Hotline Miami Wildlife Number One from Behemoth Comics. That's right. Get ready for this trend to continue, Brian, because video game comics are here to stay. And if you're not familiar with Hotline Miami, you're looking at a game that's available on the Nintendo Switch platform that is a 10 out of 10 ranked game from video, from video game rating websites like Games Radar and Stream and others. That's incredible. Um, this is a game that has been very popular with gamers, independent produced game, um, and has kind of grown in momentum to the point that now we're getting a comic series. So we're getting for other forms of media. This is one to pay attention to because we also know ho that Hollywood is paying attention to these video game properties. So Nintendo Switch is certainly one of the kind of like platforms of the day. It's one the young kids tend to be kind of gravitating towards. Uh, and I think that this comic has a chance, something to pay attention to. And I think we're gonna see more of these video game properties popping up, Brian. So here we are at Boom Studios, and once again, we are talking about that title, Something is Killing the Children. We're talking about issue 10. This has that regular cover and a 1 in 25 incentive variant. That's right. We're going to keep talking about this at FOC Day because every kind of month we're sitting at FOC time, and those 1 in 25 incentives are gettable, right? If you talk to an LCS, if you talk to wherever your online retailer is, and you say to them, you know, look, you know, we're looking for that 125, the prices tend to be reasonable, but that has not been the case come release date. These books are skyrocketed. Something's killing the children. It's probably the most popular independent comic series out right now. Um, really on fire. Perfect timing as James Tynan is also hot with everything he's doing with the Bat Family and DC Comics. So do not sleep on this. We've got a brand new arc starting with the next issue. So this being the last issue in this arc and a lot of uh, retailers jumping on exclusives in the next issue. This one could very well get overlooked, so do not sleep on this. This is definitely one to pay attention to for FOC. Yeah, so once again, that's our indie showcase for the week presented by BlackCapeComics.com. In addition to pre-ordering all the books we're talking about on the show, they also have their very own We Only Find Them When They're Dead number one exclusive variant from Boom Studios, and the artist on that is Educure. Fantastic artist, has that art germ type style. We bought the cover on the screen right now. That will be available over at blackcapecomics.com for you to order. But we get to that part right now where people start clicking off and going to other videos, but we talk about this. This is the additional printing section and a lot of people like some of these and we have some fire ones coming out this FOC as well, right, Jack? Oh, that's right. Late printings are here to stay. They are fire on the secondary market and I tell you what, the publishers are paying attention. We've got Undiscovered Country number seven coming with a second print from Image Comics. Snake Eyes Dead Game, that Rob Liefeld miniseries number one is hitting a second print from IDW. We've got Empire number four hitting a second print. We've got Star Wars Bounty Hunters number one hitting a third print. And then we enter the realm of Thor. We've got Thor number one hitting a third print. Thor number three hitting a fourth print. And we've got Thor number four hitting a third print. I think all of those are worth a pickup. Then, we're not done yet. We've got Strange Academy number two hitting a third print. We just talked about the second print on the Bolo Show. Grit number one hitting a second print from Scout Comics. Batman Adventures continues number one and number two, both hitting second prints. As well as Batman number 90 being a third print. And Seven Secrets number one hitting a third print. Now, this is one to pay attention to. Seven Secrets number one just dropped this past Wednesday. The second print hasn't even released yet and has clearly sold out and we're moving to a third print. Pay attention. This is a simple men's alert. This is a something's killing the children situation. This is exactly what happened there. You're going to see these late prints become tougher and tougher to find. FOC is the time to get those orders in for those late prints. Yeah, in addition to that third printing, we talked about the second printing right there on simplemanscomics.com and the 616comics.com. We have that fantastic Glad Melnikoff Ultimate Fallout 4 homage variant. Not only one cover, not only really two covers, but we have what, a total of four covers, right? That's right, because we didn't just homage the second print, Ron. We also homage the second print variant by Sarah Pacelli. So we came with 
two exclusive homages, homaging that great first appearance of Miles Morales on that Seven Secrets number one second print. But those two 500 print uh, undressed virgin copies, that wasn't enough. We wanted to drop that limited edition collectible. Each cover has a 100 print limited version. Uh, one uh, on the variant is a sketch cover. On the regular cover, it is a uh, color hold cover. But both of those are limited to just 100. And they will be the lowest printed Seven Secrets number ones that exist. Yes. And not only are they the lowest printed, we did it by following the rules. We didn't have yeah. like 400 printed and say, hey, there's only 100 and we're destroying the other ones. 100 printed of those extra covers and that's it. Yes, that's it. But there it is, guys. Those are our picks for comic books that are heading final order cutoff this coming Monday night. Do what you guys have to do, whether it's contact your LCS, get your orders in online, go to blackcapecomics.com. Also, our channel sponsor, Frankie's Comics, will be having FOC ordering on their site here very soon. So make sure you get your orders in. Don't wait till release week when you guys are hunting these down and the prices have gone up already. And with that being said, guys, this is Brian and Jack for Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.